Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with David Floyer, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is Pure Accelerate 2017. This is the second year of Pure Accelerate. Last year was uh, a little north of here, at, uh, right outside AT&T Park. Pure, it's pretty funny. Pure chose this venue. It's like this old, rusted out steel warehouse <laughs> where they used to make battleships, and they're going to tear this down after the, the, the show. So of course the metaphor is spinning rust, old legacy systems that Pure is essentially replacing. This is like a swan song goodbye to the old days, welcome in the new. So very clever marketing by Pure. I mean, they did a great job setting up it's this uh, rusty old nice, building. It's a nice Hopefully building. Hopefully it doesn't fall yeah. down on our heads. <laughs> and uh, so, but let's get to the, to the event. Uh, the messaging was very strong here. I mean, they pull no punches. Nope. You know, legacy, slow, uh, expensive, not agile. We're fast and simple, come with us. Um, of course, the narrative from the big guys is, oh, pure, they're small, they're losing money, you know, they're in a little niche. Uh, but you see this company, as I said earlier, uh, when, when Matt uh, uh, Kicksmuller was on, they've hit escape velocity. Absolutely. Um, they're yeah. not going out of business. Nope. Okay, there's a lot of companies you and see. And they're them, making a profit. Yeah, yes. you read their yeah. financials and you say, uh-oh, this yep. company's in deep you know what. Uh, no, they're not making a profit yet. Pure. Well, they, they are, but they, they are projecting but to make projecting, a profit right. in the next six months. But they basically yeah. got you know, $525 million in the balance sheet. They, their negative free cash flow gets them through, by my calculation, the next nine or 10 years, because they have zero debt. They could easily take out debt if they wanted to. Growing at 30% a year. They'll do a billion dollars this year. $2.4 billion market cap. They didn't have a big brain drain six months after the IPO, which was really important. It was like, yep, yep. business as usual. They've yep. maintained the core management team. I know Jonathan Martin's you know, moving on, but they're bringing in Todd Forsythe to run marketing. Very seasoned uh, marketing executive. So, you know, things are really pretty interesting. The, 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 the fact is we haven't seen a billion dollar storage company that's independent since NetApp. There's only one left, NetApp. Yeah. EMC is now Dell EMC. Yeah. Three par never made it even close to a billion outside of HPE. Isilon couldn't make it. Compellent couldn't make it. Data Domain you know, couldn't make it as a, as a billion dollar company. None of those guys could ever reach that level of escape velocity that it appears that Pure and Nutanix are both on. Your thoughts, David Floyer. I, I couldn't agree more. They, they have made their whole mantra simplicity. Uh, they've really brought in the same sort of simplicity as New Nutanix is doing. Those are the companies that seem to have been uh, really making it because the, the fundamental value proposition to their customers is you don't need to put in lots of people to manage this. It'll manage itself. And I think that's, they've stuck to that uh, and they have been very successful with that simple message. Obviously, taking a flash product and replacing old rust with it is, makes it much simpler. They're starting off from a very good starting point. But they've extended that right the way up to a whole lot of cloud services with Pure. Uh, they've extended it in their whole philosophy of how they put data services together. I'm very impressed with that. It reminds me of actually the early days of, NetApp. Of, of, no, of, of, of NetApp and also of uh, uh, the, the, the three, uh, three par. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Days. Simplicity, very, very simple. great yeah. stored services, tier one. Yeah, right. When I say NetApp, I'm thinking you know, simplicity and stored ser services the, uh, as well. Yeah. But yeah. I, you know, this is the, the joke that I've been making all week is that you talk to a practitioner, you say, what's your storage strategy? Oh, I buy EMC for block, exactly. I buy NetApp for file. Right. And Pure is sort of not only challenging that convention, but they're trying to move the market to this big data and, and, and analytics. Um, and they also have a unique perspective on converged and hyper-converged. They kind of deposition hyper-converged as you know, okay for certain use cases, not really scalable. Um, not really applicable to a lot of the things we're doing. 
you know, Nutanix could probably, might even reach a billion dollars before Pure, so well, it's going to be interesting. I, I think they have a, a second strategy there, which is to be an OEM supplier. Uh -huh. uh, for their work with Cisco, for example. Yeah. They're an OEM supplier there. They're, they are bending to the requirements of being an OEM supplier, and I think that's their way into the hyperconverged market is working with certain vendors, certain areas, providing the storage in the way that that, that uh, integrator wants and, and acting in that way. And I, I think that's a smart strategy. I think that's the way that they're going to survive in their traditional market. But what's to me interesting, anyway, is that they are really starting to break out into different markets, into the uh, AI market, into flash for big data, into that type of market, and with a very interesting approach, which is you can't afford to take all the data from the edge to the center, so you need us, and uh, you need to process that data using us because it's in real time these days. You need that speed uh, and then you want to minimize the amount of data that you move up the, the stack to the center. I think it's a very so, interesting strategy. So they're competing against you know, a lot of massive companies. I mean, and they're competing with this notion of simplicity, some speed and innovation in these new areas. I mean, look at, compare this with, with you know, EMC's portfolio now, Dell, EMC's portfolio. Um, it's never been more complicated, <laughs> right? But, they got one of everything. Yep. They got a massive distribution channel. Uh, they can solve a lot of problems. HPE, a little bit more focused uh, than Dell EMC. Really going hard after the edge. Yep. So they bring some interesting competition yes. there. And they bring um, the server side, which is... And, and, uh, and as yeah. does Dell. Yes. So they got servers, mm -hmm. right? Which is something that uh, Pure has to partner on. And then IBM, it's like, you know, they kind of still got their toe in infrastructure, but, you know, their, Ginny Rometty's heart is not in it, you know? It's, but it's, they, it's, it's, they, they have the it, they can make money yeah. at it, yeah. and, you know, it's, yeah. they're making it software defined, but... Yeah. And then you got a lot of little guys kind of bubbling. Well, Nimble got taken out, uh, yeah. Sim SimpliVity, which of course was was converged, hyper-converged. A lot of sort of new emerging guys, you got you know, guys like Daytream out there, Iguazio, Infinidat is another one. Much, much smaller, growing pretty rapidly. You know, what are your thoughts? Can any of these guys become a billion dollar company? I mean, we've talked for years, David, about, we remember we wrote a piece, yeah. can EMC remain independent? Yeah. Well, answer was no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, can Pure well, remain independent, in your view? Uh, it, I don't believe it could do if it was ju uh, just purely storage, uh, except by taking the OEM route. But I think if they go after it as a data company, as an as a information company, an information processing company, and, and focus on the software that's required to do that, right. along with the processes, I think uh, they can, yes. I think there's room for somebody. Well, you heard what Kick said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt Kixmuller said, we might have to take, take storage out of the, the name. <laughs> the name, that's right. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think they will, yeah. So they're playing in a big TAM. I mean, the TAM's enormous. So right, let's talk about some of the stuff we've been working on. Uh, the True Private Cloud Report is hot. Yeah. I think it's very relevant here. On-prem, customers want to substantially mimic the public cloud, uh, not just virtualization, management, orchestration, simplified provisioning, a business model that provides elasticity, including pricing elasticity. HPE actually had some interesting commentary there on their, uh, their on-demand pricing, right. uh, not just a rental mm. model. So they're doing some interesting things. I think you'll see others follow suit there. I find Pure to be very cloud-like in yes. that regard, in, in terms of Evergreen. Yeah. I mean, they essentially have yeah. a SaaS subscription model and for they're going their appliance, after the staff right? vendors yes. as well in the in this OEM mode. Yeah, they call it four yeah. to four to four to one thousand cloud yeah. vendors. So, mm. so your true private cloud report that what was significant about that was, to me anyway, was one hundred and fifty billion dollars approximately is going to exit the market in terms of IT labor that's doing today non differentiated lifting of patching, provisioning, server that's provisioning, right. LUN provisioning, storage management, performance management, tuning all the stuff that adds no value to the business, it just keeps the lights on. That's going to go away and it's going to shift into public cloud yep. and true. what we call true private cloud. Now true yeah. private cloud is going, 
in our view, to be larger yep. than infrastructure as a service in the public cloud, not as large as SaaS, and it's the fastest growing part of the market today from a smaller base. And, and, and also we'll deal with the edge. So it punctuate that, so also yeah. down to the edge. So yeah. what's driving that true private cloud market? The, the, uh, what's driving it is IoT to a large extent because you need stuff to be low latency. And you need therefore private clouds on the edge, in the center, data has a high degree of gravity, it's difficult to move out. So you want to move the application to where that data mm -hmm. is. So if data starts in the cloud, it should stay in the cloud. If it starts in the edge, you want to keep it there and let it die, most of it die there. And if it starts in headquarters, again, no point in moving it just for the sake of moving it. So uh, where possible, private cloud is going to be the better way of dealing with data at the edge and data in headquarters, which is a lot of data. Okay, so a lot of announcements here today, NVMe and NVMe of a fabric, yeah. uh, you know, pushing hard into a file and object, which really they're the only ones with all flash doing that. Uh, I think again, I think others will follow suit once they ha start having some success there. What are some of the things that you are working on with the Wikibon team these days? Well, the next thing we're doing is the update of the, uh, well, two, two things. We're doing a piece on, on what we call Unigrid, which is this new NVMe over fabric architecture, uh, which we think is going to be very, very important to all uh, enterprise computing. The ability to merge the uh, traditional uh, state applications, applications of record with these large AI and, and other uh, big data relevant applications. Relevant for what we've been talking about here. Very yeah. relevant indeed, and that's the architecture that we believe will bring that together. And then after that, we're doing our uh, uh, service end and uh, converged infrastructure report and the house showing how the two of those emerge. Great, that's a, that's a report that's always been, uh, been, been very uh, highly anticipated. Yeah. Uh, I think this yeah. is our third or fourth year fourth doing that, year, right? Yeah. Fourth year, yeah. so mm. great, looking forward to that. Well, David, thanks very much for, for co-hosting with me and uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Okay, that's it, we're one day here at, at Pure Accelerate. Uh, tomorrow we're at Hortonworks DataWorks Summit. We were there today actually as well. Uh, and Cloud Foundry Summit. Of course, we're also at the AWS Public Sector. John Furrier is down there. Um, so yeah, theCUBE is crazy, busy. Uh, next week, we're in Munich at, uh, at uh, IBM as an event, uh, the, the, the data, data summit. Uh, and, and then the week after that, we're at Nutanix.next. So a lot going on theCUBE, check out SiliconANGLE. TV, find out where we're going to be next. Go to wikibon.com for all the research and siliconangle.com for all the news. Thanks you guys, great job, thanks to Pure. We're out, this is theCUBE, see you next time.